was just next door, right here, behind the screen, peeking through a little corner there, and I could see all of you immersing yourself in the moment. Fantastic. And then I heard you all go, ah. <laughs> and I thought, that's what I need right now, because I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm happy to be here, and I'm happy to see all of you. So, hello. My name is Eldridge Lubinjo, and over the next 18 minutes, I'm going to share with you a story about dance and health. I'm going to tell you about moving towards mental well-being and the biopsychosocial model. Try saying that fast. Biopsychosocial model. Why should you need to know about the biopsychosocial model? That's because it's the physical, emotional, and social potential for dance and movement to help us all become healthier. Everybody wants to be healthy. Sometimes we need help to achieve it. I know I did. And I said dance and movement because we all move. And I know that life is movement and movement is life. So before we go further, I would like to share with you all and invite you all to have a movement experience together with me. And because I want it to be an absolutely amazing experience, I've asked my good friend and esteemed colleague, Andrew Greenwood, Hello. to guide us. Hi, Hello. Andrew. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, guys, congratulations. Yeah, absolutely. Every one of you are a proud owner of the most complex ecosystem in the universe. Can you do that? Just do that for me. Have, just have a look at those. I mean, these things are amazing. Can you wriggle your toes at the same time? Move your toes. Congratulations, you are moving more than half of your bones right now. You're moving exactly 106 of them. Can you do some jellyfish? Just do some jellyfish. There you go, look at that. Uh, Let's not do Scottish jellyfish, let's do some tropical jellyfish. Uh, uh, there you go. <laughs> You're off. All right. Yeah? You are absolutely amazing. You, actually, you all are proud owner of a Lamborghini, a Ferrari. The problem is, we sit down for 9 to 12 hours a day, so basically our Lamborghinis, Ferraris, are in the garage. Yeah? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take you on a neurotransmitting journey. I'm going to fire up all your hormones and your uh, endorphins in three minutes. Let's get everybody standing, Andrew. I'm just about to do that, but thank you very much. <laughs> Can you stand up, guys? Come on. All right, so the first one I'm going to inject you with is, is a little bit of adrenaline. Yeah? Let's go. Add. Let's go. No, that's not it. <laughs> Louder. <laughs> Step those feet. Oh, yeah. That's it. Look Bloody at you. Europe I feel like a pop star. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to do some crocodile. You Get your back going. Your face, your big oh, yeah. Look at you. <laughs> Oh, oh, nice. We will, we will rock you. All right, all right. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Stay there, stay there. Right. Let's go somewhere else. This is cheaper than Ryanair. We can go anywhere we want. Let's go, yeah? Let's put some sunshine in your lives. Be careful of your neighbor. <laughs> That's it. Look at that. All right, dancers, crocodiles. Breathe. Yeah, you breathe 23,000 times a day, give or take. There you go. Look at that. Anyway, that's enough of that. <laughs> okay. Let's get some testosterone going. Because you know I'm all about Move your fruit bowl. Come on. Move your fruit bowl. I dare you. Come on. That's it. Move your fruit bowl. This is your fruit bowl. Yeah, really? 
in the, in the physiotherapy, it's called the basin, but I call it Fubo. That's it. Yeah, Shake your mango. Clear. Come on. It there you go. <laughs> All right. All right. I'll get arrested. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. He gets paid for this. <laughs> yeah. I, I, have a, I have a funny <laughs> job. All right, guys. Let's go. <laughs> ah, look at you. Come on. You're safe. That's it. All right, dancers. Let's move the shoulders. Look at you. OK, jellyfish. Oh, crocodile. <laughs> Fruit bowl. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm just injecting you with hormones and endorphins, yeah? Just like that. Now, um, of course, there are many physical things. Golf, swimming, bicycling, they're all good. Absolutely for respect. But if you want to keep yourself healthy and away from dementia, you've got to read a lot or do puzzles, but you've got to do four a week. Or you can dance. Now, dancing, of course, is physical, but it's, it's your, 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 your neurons, yeah? They're the ones that are moving. This is the stuff. It might seem crazy, yeah, that's it. Serotonin! Oh, yeah, get some serotonin there. All right, guys, keep going. Let's get some dopamine in there. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's it. Yeah. I'm going to run out of time. Oh, you're going to run out of time. All right. OK. OK, shake it out. That's it. That's it. OK. Thank you. OK. Thank you very much, everybody. I have to go. I have to go. How are you all feeling? Good? What kind of good? Very good. What else? Great. It, it's absolutely amazing that Andrew, in just a few minutes, a few minutes longer than I thought he would take, actually, but in just a few minutes, managed to get us to feel good, very good. That's because movement in general, and dance especially, activates the body in making endorphins. Endorphins, as some of you may know, are the natural chemicals that the body makes to signal your brain. These signals tell your brain how your body is feeling, how you are feeling. And that means that we're able to do something incredible. We're able to change our emotional states through something as simple as moving. There are many different endorphin signalers. Andrew said a couple. Dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, just to name a few. And Researchers are able to measure increased levels of endorphins, like dopamine. That's the, yeah, get the football moving. And serotonin, that's the, mm, I'm feeling calm and collected. And oxytocin, that's, I'm not feeling so lonely. I'm feeling together. These feelings are what we call emotions. And the role of emotions in many levels is just information from you, by you, for you. Biologically, the most important information is probably when to run and where to run to. Running away from is moving away from pain. What would happen if you put out your hand and accidentally touched a red hot stove? You'd pull back away from pain. Running towards is moving towards pleasure. Imagine yourself flying into the arms of love. The word emotion comes from the Latin word e movera, which means in movement. So this movement, feelings, emotions, is hardwired into our system through endorphins. Uh, we've had an experience of moving, and you just had an explanation of what happens to us when we move. So now I'd like to tell you a story of moving towards and away from. Picture a boy, four years old, big, fuzzy, funky afro, dark eyes, walking through the media department of a store on every wall, hundreds of screens, and on every screen, 
the image of a man flying. Yes, flying. No wings, no wires, just a sense of grace, ease, and strength. The boy's mouth falls open. He wonders, how can you do that? What is that? Who is that? What's that called? He asks his mother, Mom, how do you do that? What is that? Who is that? What's that called? She says one word, a word that changes his life, that changed my life forever. Ballet. <laughs> Later, I learned that the man on the screen was a phenomenal, fantastic dancer called Rudolf Nureyev. Nureyev is quoted as saying, you live as long as you dance. The prowess, the physicality, the sense of joy and the depth of emotion that I perceived on those screens 43 years ago put me on the path towards becoming a professional dancer. First, in the state and city dance companies, Saarbrück and Stadttheater and Heidelberg Stadttheater, Germany, later in Scapino Ballet, Rotterdam, the Netherlands, and Ballet du Nord, Lille, France. I became a freelancer after that and had an absolutely amazing career. I was very fortunate. But it wasn't always easy. And sometimes, like when I had an injury to my right ankle, it was difficult. At 25, in my physical prime, I had an injury that left me unable to walk, let alone dance. On top of that, it had been incorrectly diagnosed, so I had two unnecessary and unsuccessful operations. After a year, I was convinced that I would never walk again without pain. So, while my love of dance had brought me to the Netherlands, my support, friends, family, with the exception of colleagues and work, were in England or in Germany. I was living in an apartment on the fourth floor of a building without a lift. I struggled to move, I struggled to get out, I struggled to stay connected to the outside world. One day on the phone to an old school friend of mine who had told me to go to see a manual therapist in Sheffield who she knew. She said, Eldridge, go see him. And anyway, what have you got to lose? She was right, of course. I had nothing to lose and everything to gain. But I was nervous. I was scared. <laughs> that was my system telling me that I didn't want to be disappointed. After a year of being sad, lonely, and in pain, I was desperate. I had nothing to lose, so I decided to go anyway. I remember asking my mother, can you go with me? She was very supportive, and we traveled up from London together to Sheffield. And I said to her, Mom, I'm on the hard shoulder of life going nowhere. Must have said the same thing to the manual therapist because after he popped my ankle back into place with the sweat still dripping from his forehead, he said to me, you're no longer the high performance sports car, more like a family car, but at least you're back on the road. That year was Revealing, humbling, and education. I learned some of my own insecurities and frailties. I realized what it meant to me not to know who I was or where I was going. I also gained a greater appreciation for being healthy and an understanding of what movement meant to me personally. Now, I'm one of three, together with Andrew Greenwood and Claire Gus West, statutory directors for the Dance and Creative Wellness Foundation. And at the Dance and Creative Wellness Foundation, I learned some of the material around depression, anxiety, and burnout. I had no idea of the impact, not just on people, their friends and families, but at society at large. In Europe, with 510 million residents, 144 million are experiencing negative stress. That's almost one in three. 
So that could be the person to your right or left here in this audience. Or you don't need to look because you, like me, have been there. You probably know somebody personally who is experiencing anxiety, depression, or stress. And if you don't, I'm sure you'll agree with me that it's still a situation that we need to reverse. We need to reverse it because it's getting worse. In the EU, the estimated cost of work-related depression is, is 600, 617 billion every year. Mark Carney, the governor of the Bank of England, said that last year 300,000 people left their jobs as a result of mental health issues. In America, one in six people takes antidepressants. Eight out of 10 people say they experience negative stress daily. A 1,000 people are going to accident and emergency departments through incorrect use of prescription opioids. That's prescription medication. So what do we need to do? How do we fix this? What will pop this problem back into place? I say one answer is movement, rhythmic structured movement. Rhythmic movement helps us stay fit and it boosts our immune system. Structured movement creates new neural pathways in our brain, helping us to function and feel better. What if anybody who is feeling sad, lonely, or in pain was able to have that experience that we had? What would that mean to them? I know that we can help people back onto the highway, get them back into the driving lane. And what we need to do, I think, is start with two things. So today I'm going to ask you to do two things. First, move for just five minutes every day, the way we did, for just six weeks. See what it gives you. Feel what you feel. Ask somebody to do it with you. Second, let's start telling a new story, a story about moving towards mental well-being, a story about the biopsychosocial model, dance and wellness. So let's all start telling this message of coming together and flying into the arms of love. Thank you.